Hey, welcome everyone uh, to this video. We're gonna get into a lot of interesting things in this video that you probably haven't heard before. Uh, I'm gonna show you a lot of things regarding why I wear these types of socks, why I wear these types of shoes with the toes showing, and I'm gonna demonstrate what exactly this is. We're gonna get into foam rolling. We're gonna get into a bit of this book, Deskbound uh, by Kelly Starrett. And I'm gonna show you the uh, benefit of having the slingshot tied around your knees when you do some sorts of exercises to activate your glutes. Now, we're also gonna get into leg length inequalities and why I got a shoe lift two years ago. I got rid of it recently how I have felt over the last month and a half without it. A lot of interesting mobility, how to activate glutes, how to become stronger, uh, a lot of like muscular imbalances, what happens if you sit for a long time, what happens if you're working in an office condition, how to correct all of these things so you do become stronger, so you are able to activate your glutes, so you are able to have muscular balance so you don't injure yourself one day or you put your back out one day. Uh, just because you're walking the wrong way or you're not activating the big toe. We're going to get into a lot of good stuff in this video. Before I get into any of that, I also want to uh, show you uh, some exercises that I did yesterday at the gym at, at Equinox uh, Yorkville, the gym I go to. And uh, I want to intermittently show these exercises as we go on this video. So this video will also show a lot of... Uh, it'll be very... Uh, demonstrative, right? I'm going to demonstrate exactly how to activate the glutes, how to activate the big toe, how to do things that allow your glutes to wake up if they've been sleeping for years. So that's what's coming uh, to you in this video. Uh, before we get into the details, let me just talk about my journey in terms of the leg lift. So two years ago, I was at strength camp. Uh, doing strength and conditioning. I was working out six days a week. And one thing that my neurosomatic therapist, Jibin, Sir Symmetry, those of you who know him, noticed is that when I squatted and I came up on my squat, my, my, my body curved to the left, right? So if you're looking at me uh, as I'm doing a squat, you're looking at my back doing the squat, I tilted to the left. So if you were looking at me from the front, I'm tilting to the right. And what they noticed is that uh, it might be because of a leg length inequality. So it turns out 60% of us, uh, studies have shown that 60% of us have a short leg, meaning one leg is shorter than, than the other. Now, there's a lot of uh, arguments against this, you know, a lot of chiropractors say this is bullshit. You can't have more than a two millimeter structural inequality. Now there's two things, right? There's structural and functional. A structural leg length uh, imbalance or inequality is when you're born with it. There's some something in the in the uh, uh, th there's something in certain bone length structure of your leg. It could be like the tibia or the femur. Or the fibula, these bones in the leg. It could be anything. Like Who the fuck knows? But then there's something known as a functional inequality where it happened because of certain things that, that happened in your life. Injuries, uh, big devastating events that might have hurt your um, structure in your body. What they say is that if you have a structural inequality, then you are able to, uh, you have to wear the lift your whole life. If you have a functional inequality, then you can get rid of your lift and, and kind of like it, your body will compensate and now you're good. Now, my neurosomatic therapist told me I have a structural leg length inequality. <clears throat> so two years ago, I got these lifts. Um, I have them here in my bag. I, I wish I had them here with me. But essentially what it's, it's basically a, a, a material which you put inside your shoe as a sole and then your leg goes on it. So my right leg is apparently six millimeters shorter than my left leg, okay? So I would put the lift in my right leg. And essentially, when I did that two years ago, my pain went away, literally went away like over a, a week or two. It was gone. And I, then I could do uh, very heavy lifts. And they found that a lot of, uh, when they do strength studies, 
uh, very carefully controlled studies, they find that there is a significant increase in strength when you compare athletes wearing the lift versus those that are barefoot, right? So the, the lift does help with strength and, and uh, uh, you know, your PRs and one rep maxes and, and whatnot. So there is that. Uh, there's also studies that show like the vertical lift increases uh, with those who have a lift. But again, these are arguable and people will argue and, and, and it's not like a, a real science yet. But anyway, I, I did it. I'm a practitioner. I'm an experiment guy. So two years ago, I got this leg lift and I've had it over the last two years. Uh, it's been fine. All my Actually, a, a lot of my shoes have a custom lift. So I, I send my shoes to Florida and a guy puts a lift customized built into the shoe. So he cuts the, the, the sole off, puts the lift in and then glues the sole back on. And, and now, you know, six millimeter greater. Now, what happened recently with my trainer uh, that I trained with at Equinox, um, she told me that my right glute is always sleeping. It's not being activated. And that's devastating, right? Because if my left glute is activating more than my right, which means it could be a hamstring thing too, my posterior chain on the left side is activating more than my right, then we could have a major muscular imbalance. We could have compensation. And, and then you start getting back pain and you start getting problems with posture later on in life or even in, in young life. And I wanted to avoid all that, right? So I was like, fuck, maybe it's because of the lift. So if you think about it, a shoe, again, I wish I had it here, I left it at the old apartment, but a shoe which, uh, actually, I might have it here. Ah, okay. I do have it, maybe. Let's see what I have. Oh, yeah, I do have it. So here it is. This is what a lift looks like, okay? Ooh, creepy, eh? Creepy. Imagine this just this sitting there at the gym. This happened once. It was creeping the fuck out of people. But yeah, so this lift basically goes inside a shoe, and then your foot goes on top of it. This is what I put inside my Vibrams, by the way, okay? All my other shoes had either uh, another type of lift, which was very well tapered off. Randy tapered it off. Randy's the, the head of the Neurosomatic Studies uh, School in Clearwater. So look him up too, Randy Clark. Um, and this lift essentially helped the pain. But what was happening is because if you notice, look, you see this lift, it is, it is bending, right? It's, it's not bad. It's not bad, right? But again, there is an issue because the, I mean, your leg is, is like a very different biomechanics than a lift would, would give it, right? So you can imagine me walking. The way you're supposed to walk is you, you heel strike, then you put your whole foot, and then there's this toe kick, like a toe off, I think it's called, like a, uh, an off toe, right? So you, you step, you go like this with your leg, then you go like this, and then you push off with your toe. And with a lift, supposedly for the last couple of years, I wasn't pushing off with my big toe. What does that mean? That means because, so this is a lot of things that my trainer has taught me. Okay, she's a level three, tier three, uh, very well certified, masters in kinesiology. Uh, she's also a nutritionist, really smart girl. So I fucking trust her uh, with my life. So. If you trust me, then you trust her. Now, what she told me is that if... So one of the things that I've learned is that the big toe is one of the most important parts of our body. Like one of like the, like the top five or something. Because it, it's basically how you walk. I read yesterday that 40% of our weight is supposed to be on our big toe when we walk. That's amazing. It's crazy. Now, if your big toe is not mobile enough or strong enough because it's not pushing off because of the lift then you will gain compensation from other body parts like your anterior chain right so like your quads um your your knees um maybe your adductors maybe there's some compensation in hip flexors and that could be very problematic that'll affect your gait that'll affect your posture that'll uh allow uh, it'll it'll 
enable you to become, um, or in a bad way, muscular imbalanced, right? So some muscles will be used more than others, so it won't be symmetric. You won't achieve, achieve symmetry in your body, and that leads to pain and, and joints being pushed uh, by the spine and so on. And this is what we saw two years ago. My left side's SI joint was being pushed on by my spine. Uh, and, and that kind of makes sense because, you know, your body tends to be like that. If you have a short on this side, if you're shorter, you're like that. I'm, I'm really exaggerating here. So uh, about a month and a half ago from talking to the trainer, understanding that I really need my glutes to fire. Right. I mean, think about it. If our big toes fire, then our glutes fire. If our big toe doesn't fire or is not activated, our glutes won't fire. And when you walk, as you're pushing off on that big toe, if your glutes, if you're not doing that, your glutes won't fire and you're supposed to be using your glutes as you walk. So if they're asleep, they're going to stay asleep and they're going to be compensated for by your anterior chain, by your quads and your knees. And that's bad, very bad, because you're going to have pain later on and so on. So anyway, about six weeks ago, I got rid of my lift, no lift. And I got these shoes, new ones, Vibrams, okay? Now, the thing with the Vibrams is that they're very crazy bendable, right? And they're very thin too, right? You notice they're very, very thin. So I got these, and I've been using these. I've been wearing these everywhere. I even, I even wore these to my, the wedding in Chicago. How crazy is that? So I've been wearing these, and I learned a lot of this stuff from this book, Desk Bound. That, that you, you don't see here, but uh, anyway, it's, it's resting here. Desk bound, Kelly Starrett. Actually, let me show you. Actually, I don't want to show you because I don't want this thing to, to fuck up. I want this quality to be high, <laughs> audio quality. So anyway, check out Desk Bound. Uh, I learned a lot of stuff in there as well for how sitting affects us in our everyday life and our and our uh, uh, why a lot of pain is because of sitting and sitting is like cancer and it's like smoking and it's really bad, by the way. So read that book, and, and I'm going to make some content about this uh, in the future as well. So I got these, and um, and yeah, so um, and obviously foam rolling helps too. So go watch the foam rolling videos that we have on, on the channel. So over the last six weeks, I have been really focusing on big toe exercises, and I want to show you some of these here. So last night, I went to Equinox and... Uh, First thing I did is I uh, I always warm up. So when you do any kind of exercise and your butt is asleep, you want to first warm up and you want to make sure your butt is not asleep anymore. You want to activate your butt. Now, gluteus maximus is the biggest muscle in the body. Okay? And it should be the greatest source of your strength when it comes to deadlifting and squatting and whatever you're doing. Right? I mean, a butt should be used for everything bench pressing lunging everything your butt should be used for and if you don't activate your butt first before you start or your bum as my my trainer says then you're not going to use your butt throughout the exercise and you're gonna just stay asleep and it's never going to become stronger you want some strong fucking glutes man so what i do first in in uh, and you'll see this here is I take a slingshot, which is this guy right here, right? This is by the company Slingshot. See it? Ah, slingshot right here. You tie this thing around your knees, either below or above. Try both, whatever works for you. And you want to do these lateral uh, walks with this on. Now, what helps is if you have a conditioning band and you tie that around your, your foot. I didn't, they didn't have it at the gym. But today when I go or tomorrow when I go, I'm going to show you that exercise in the future of how to do it with the uh, conditioning band. But some of you don't have conditioning bands and most gyms don't have it. I just carry it around in, with my bag everywhere I travel. So I have them. But for you, use, the, uh, use without the conditioning band, just use a slingshot, this, or use something that is like a strap, something stretchable, bendable around your knees, either below or above. And just do these lateral walks back and forth, back and forth, and bend yourself a bit. You're going to see this demonstration as you see it now. And then what you want to do is come forward. And as you come forward, you will, you want to kind of do this thing where you go, 
right? You're going in and out, in and out, in and out. And then when you go backwards, again, you're going in and out, in and out, in and out. And that fucking activates your glutes big time. So you want to do that uh, before you start every exercise. And you want to really feel fire and blood inside your glute, like blood flow, I mean. The other exercise you want to do is this thing that my Pilates instructor taught me. Also amazing, an amazing person, another amazing badass girl. And she taught me these uh, unilateral, um, essentially like single leg, uh, you just like, I don't know, it's called like a chair, chair deadlift. Like you're like, you're like, you're like looking, you're, you're pretending to sit on a chair with one leg and make sure your legs are square. And you are basically keeping your other leg in front of you and you go down as much as you can and then you go back up like a deadlift. And you keep doing up like a deadlift, like a deadlift. And you keep sticking your bum out, stick, stick your bum out, stick your bum out, come up like a, like a deadlift. And these exercises on both sides will not only test, um, not, will not only make your glutes activate and, and like not asleep anymore, they'll make them stronger and you will see how weak your stabilizers are, right? There, there's muscles in your body that stabilize your body, that stabilize your core. Because remember, your butt is part of your core, right? Like your glutes are part of the big core in your body. It's not just your six pack. Um, so you want to notice how much you're shaking when you're doing these exercises. Are you able to do them easily? If not, you might want to just like for structural integrity, just stand there with one knee bent a little bit, you know, with your bum sticking out and just stand, just, just stay there in that position to gain stability first in your core to make your core stronger. So that's also very important. The other thing you want to see is that are your knees coming in inward or are they staying out? You want your knees to stay outward. If they're coming inward, then there's some issues with your hip flexors. So you want to notice that too. I'm giving you these tools so you can go to the gym and apply these to, to really correct your glutes and your hamstrings and your posterior chain stuff. And all of the exercises that I'm showing you today in this video is big toe exercises, right? How do you use your big toe? So as I'm doing this unilateral, um, uh, you know, hip thrust, uh, chair, sit, deadlift type thing, I'm trying to consciously push my big toe into the ground on both sides depending on the side that my foot is uh, on the ground with and I'm like screwing like doing a screwing movement like you know how you screw something in so my leg I want to like screw it imagine this is my foot I want to screw it screw it uh, uh, with my big toe especially into the ground so that's what I'm trying to do there with both feet um, next uh, the exercise I did, uh, or the, the series of exercises I did were with my um, big toe. It was all glutes exercises. We also did a little bit of uh, we meaning I and, and, and the, the, these, uh, this guy I'm following on Instagram named Roy Chan. Uh, really, really good guy. Actually, the way I found out about Roy is like my Pilates instructor, who's an epic badass. She's training with Roy. Which means Roy is like, damn, you know? So I started following his Instagram. You should follow him too. Just do the exercises he does. I mean, you can watch me do them here as I'm going to demonstrate. Or you can just watch him do it. I'm going to maybe do it in more detail with different angles. And maybe have a lot more commentary. But like for the proper technique, watch him do it. I do it in a fucked up way. Uh, and and c please feel free to comment below and correct me and, and, and help me out here as well. Because there's a lot of you who are watching this who might be, you know, personal trainers and like have been trained in this stuff. I'm not trained in this stuff. Right? I'm a neuroscience guy. Um, I'm, you know, I studied a lot of testosterone. I studied that kind of stuff. I had a lot of experiences, but, uh, you know, I, I know how to read scientific papers. That this doesn't mean I'm like a fitness, uh, you know, uh, personal trainer. Not that. Maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll get there. But I'm learning. I'm a student like you. So we all learn together. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I've just basically followed a lot of exercises that Roy taught. Uh, one of these exercises I remember from yesterday is uh, he, he did it with this girl. Uh, he showed this girl the exercises. 
you basically um, take this, uh, take a towel, you know, you put it on, on your mat or slidey thing that we have, the slidey panel thing. And you're basically uh, putting your foot on that towel and you're, you're raising it. So you're, you, you, your heels are raised, only the balls of your feet, uh, especially your big toe balls are on it. And you're driving with the other leg that is l fucking pushed into the ground all the way, especially the big toe. So you drive, let's say you drive with the right, uh, sorry, it, let's say you go back with the right foot, you're driving, but you're actually activating the left glute big time, like fucking crazy. So do this on either side and uh, you're going to really get some good glute activation with this exercise. So that's that. Um, one thing to notice is that keep trying, like your body may not have done this movement before. Uh, so give your body the chance to actually get adjusted and uh, used to this, you know, stabilizers and mo mobilizers and just like whatever muscles have not been used, uh, they might be used now. So, so do that exercise there. So I did that for my glutes yesterday. The next thing uh, that, that I learned from Roy is uh, this, this set of, um, oh, oh, yeah, this is the next thing I learned. It's the bent over row. So in the bent over row, one thing that Roy teaches is that you don't want to use your back. You want to use your core. Make the bent over row a core exercise. He has a specific video, a specific post about this. And the way to do it is that instead of having your, like, instead of having your thing like this, your 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 uh, like your protracted. You want to have it like this. You want to have it so so you're actually using your core and your back is all the way up, right? You don't want to do this like 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 using your back, but you want to have it like that. So if one, let's say you're lifting with your right leg, your 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 your, your right arm, your bent over row with your dumbbells or kettlebells, your your right arm is not going to be like your your your. Uh, it's not going to be like protracted. It's your back is not going to be like that. It's going to be like this. So it's going to be extended all the way. So you're going to watch how I do that in, in these bent over rows. So I did that for three sets of 10. Uh, that was awesome. I really, really felt the core uh, activated. And also one thing, again, this is a big toe exercise. Uh, and I don't mean like strengthening only your big toe because it's also a glute exercise, also a core exercise. So it's like a big toe activates core activates glutes and we become stronger overall right you're using these big uh muscles in your body right your glutes are a huge muscle uh the big toe is activating that glute your core is a big muscle i mean it's basically your, a lot of your body except your limbs um right so the using these big muscles activating them simultaneously that's how you increase testosterone so many studies have shown this when you use a lot of muscles in your body simultaneously, that is when you get the greatest rise in testosterone. And that is why deadlifts and squats and, 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 and uh, 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 pull-ups and muscle-ups, that's why these work to boost testosterone naturally using exercise and using movement. So that's one uh, bent over row exercise. And one thing you'll notice is that you have to really push your big toe into the ground even during this exercise so if i'm lifting with this right i'm pull like pushing down i'm pulling with this and i'm pushing down with this so it's like a right it's like a push pull exercise and you, you'll see that there the next one i did yesterday was a set of three exercises which were very hard to do by the way the first one was this thing uh, where you take a kettlebell or you can take a dumbbell too, or kettlebells I prefer, and you just do a single leg deadlift with the kettlebell. But what's interesting is that you are, your, your foot, your, your foot that you're, you're uh, sort of lifting with is on the ball, on the ball of, it, of your feet, right? So you're getting that glute activation, you're getting that big toe to become stronger. And, and Roy is a smart guy. Why do you think he's doing all this? He's a fucking brilliant dude. Um, so you do these sing single leg deadlifts with a kettlebell that way. The next thing you want to do, uh, so, so that, that's, you do that on both sides. Just get a manageable weight. Make sure you, are, you have the proper type of uh, uh, form, 
Make sure your, your, your knees are not going inward. They're going outward when you do the lifts, as you see me do and, and Roy do. Um, notice if your knees are shaking or if you have some kind of like weakness. You know, notice that imbalance if that's happening. Um, so that's, that's the first exercise. The second exercise we did, and I, and I, and I went back and forth, right? So, it's, so I did three sets, but I kept uh, rotating. So it's like a superset. The next one was uh, very difficult. It was a uh, kettlebell uh, going up like a, like a press. But the thing is, when I brought the kettlebell here, it was really hard for me to, to, to use that because it was too heavy. So I got, you know, I get bruises here on my wrist. Uh, I don't know if you can see it today, but it's gone now. But I get these bruises and uh, it really hurts, right? So if it's a heavy kettlebell and, I, and I'm not, my, my, my wrist is not used to it. I have a weak wrist. So when I lift up and I go with the press here and I go down, it really hurts here. So I'm not able to do these uh, shoulder presses yet, but hopefully I will be able to. And a little bit later on, uh, what I did was I switched to a lower weight, only like a 10 pound. So then it was like easy to do, right? So it's, it's all the wrist thing. Like the lifting is not hard. The strength is there. It's just that the wrist is, ah, it fucking hurts even now when I touch it. So you just have to get your wrist uh, used to that. And then Roy and them, they've been doing this, this for like years, maybe even decades and so good. Uh, not decades, at least a decade. Um, so that so that was the next one. And I, and I stopped doing that after a while because it hurt. So uh, I moved on to the next exercise. This one is the, the proper way to do a push-up. Now, this is something I've learned very recently. You know, I used to do push-ups in a very stupid way. I could do like 50 push-ups uh, in a row. Those are dumbass push-ups. You want to do real push-ups, uh, you have to do them in a proper way. And, and real push-ups, I can do like 10 and then I get tired and like fe start feeling like, oh my God, this is too much. The proper way to do a push-up is you are, uh, I mean, I I'm doing it here. You'll see it. One thing is you want to, when you come all the way up, you want to be completely extended like this. You don't want to be like this. You want to be like this, right? You want to do the entire range of movement in a push-up. That's the proper way. When you are starting the push-up, you want to have uh, your, your, your spine in a very neutral position like like it would be when like a, for a human being to have that you know a human position not some weird position you want to have your ribs in that's something that i've that i learned from my instructors here at equinox you don't want to be like this you want to be like you want to have your rib sometimes our ribs are sticking out but you want your ribs to be in and that's very important and that's what's going to activate the core when you do these exercises so have your ribs in uh um and 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 actually like try to activate your glute while you do this like actually like activate it and, and now that you've done the glute activation uh, sort of awake exercises how to awaken the glute exercise um, now you can do the push-up properly and then when you extend your arm outward like we do here um, you're basically doing a plank and you're doing these push-ups and you're doing all five from one side and then five from the other side and it's really gonna work it really really works i think it's a really brilliant exercise um and i did that yesterday and it, it felt really good so shout out to roy um, i'm gonna post his instagram here uh, I, I also show you in in my in the app so you might have seen it but i'm gonna post his uh, instagram uh, stuff in the description below go check out his instagram follow him uh, let him know that that uh you know you came from me a lot of love from me to, to roy he's, he's doing great uh taught me a lot already i've only been following him for the last four or five days and i've already learned so much from him so uh, give him a shout out a uh, really good guy and uh, yeah let's just learn from people like go on instagram watch someone's video and just do that at the gym and and record yourself and then show it to see if you're doing it right that's it uh I mean, go to Biggest Balls in the Game, our Facebook group, Balls with a Z. Post your workouts there, and we're all going to see if you're doing it right. And if you're not, then you're going to do better. Someone in the group as a personal trainer is going to help you out. Simple as that. And, uh, and, and that's it. Make sure you read the description below always. We have a lot of you know, free material, bonuses, new books that we've published uh, or, or writing about or just like a lot of 
exclusive content is all in the description below. Make sure you read it. Uh, give a thumbs up if you want me to do these types of demonstrative videos in the future. You like me to do fitness stuff where I actually show what I'm doing and uh, talk about it and, and, and really the theory of it and what I've learned from my personal trainers, my Pilates instructor and people I'm following on Instagram. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel to get notifications for future videos and share these videos with your friends. Uh, share it all over social media so we can all learn and, and grow together. And if you have any questions, please post them below. Uh, this is uh, Farhan. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm here in Toronto uh, in my apartment. And uh, this is a little studio I, I made here in, in, in nice and cozy. I have Toronto downtown in the background. I'm in the heart of downtown. And uh, it's been really great. I really enjoy living here and uh, very peaceful. I made a little, uh, you know, being an Airbnb entrepreneur is it's pretty great, you know, the travel and all that and having these heart to heart conversations with you and in a very cozy environment is also very rewarding. And, and I'm very honored to share this with you. So thank you again. See you next time. Bye bye.